this video will describe an experiment for detecting the arrival times of two light beams in a fiber optic gyroscope using new equipment developed at Skyhunt. We will then describe theoretically what appears to be viewed by various observers watching the device. And finally, we will discuss the implications for the actual constancy of the speed of light and if this is consistent with relativity. In order to perform this experiment, we have developed a new low-frequency data logging oscilloscope. This device features a touch control screen for setting parameters such as time of day and trigger intervals, and also displays real-time voltage data on screen so that the events of our experiment can be witnessed directly. Data will be stored on a built-in SD card which can then be analyzed in Excel if required. Today this micro oscilloscope will serve as our rotating observer. To describe our experiment briefly, we've got a fiber optic gyroscope set up. I've got it shown here. It's a one kilometer fiber optic spool and we're going to have a laser send light in opposite directions down this spool so it's going to go clockwise this way and also counterclockwise clockwise that way at the same time. The two beams will come back and meet at the photo detector and the interference voltage that we get will be displayed on our little micro oscilloscope and we'll have a camera mounted on a pedestal which will be able to view this voltage in real time as it, uh, as it occurs. And just to show uh, what the waves are going to look like on the uh, little micro oscilloscope, I've got this shown in the back here. This is um, just an illustration of our two beams returning to the photo detector which I've got shown as this little plate here. And uh, when we start off in the stationary condition, we'll adjust the gyroscope so that the two waves are in the antiphase condition. So the two crests will subtract and we'll have a voltage minimum. And then as we uh, accelerate the rotor up, the waves will uh, move in their posi position with one another um, because one will arrive later and the other one will, will arrive earlier at the photo detector. So they'll move through, let's say, the in-phase condition where there's a voltage maximum. And then as they continue on, they'll go through a voltage minimum as they're in the antiphase condition, et cetera, et cetera, until we reach a stable angular velocity where they will form some intermediate voltage. And then they'll go back the other way as we uh, decelerate the gyroscope and head back towards the uh, stationary condition, which will be back in this antiphase condition. So we'll try and show that now with our fiber optic gyroscope. The start condition is stationary with respect to the lab. Baseline is 0.08 volts. The signal oscillates as one beam overtakes the other at the detector. When the gyroscope reaches a stable angular velocity, a new baseline is established at about 1.35 volts. The only clue to that we are rotating is the light passing over the pan. As the gyroscope now slows down, the beams move back to where they started, passing through several peaks and troughs, or fringes. We now arrive back at our original baseline when the rotor stops. So what are the perspectives of our observers? For example, someone viewing the experiment on the gyroscope versus someone viewing the experiment from the lab. For our observer on the rotor, the gyroscope appears stationary. The lab appears to rotate around him whereas the observer in the lab sees the optical path as longer for the beam chasing the detector than the beam approached by the detector. For our observer on the rotor, the fiber paths appear stationary and of constant length, so he would measure the speed of light for each beam is faster or slower than C. For our observer in the lab, the fiber paths are moving, so he would measure the speed of light for each beam is C, and the path lengths to be different. 
So which observer is more valid, the one that measures a constant speed of light or the one that doesn't? Remember that Einstein said, Light is always propagated in empty space with a definite velocity, c, which is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body. Furthermore, the same laws of electrodynamics and optics will be valid for all frames of reference for which the equations of mechanics hold good. The fiber optic gyroscope detects rotation with respect to the fixed stars, or to put it another way, with respect to some form of absolute space in the Newtonian sense. The problem is that the so-called stationary observer in the laboratory frame is also rotating with the Earth once per day with respect to this space. So the speed of light will still be non-constant and unequal around the device even when the gyroscope appears to be stationary to the laboratory observer. This phenomenon is used every day in ship and aircraft navigational systems to determine the direction of motion on the globe. The same goes for Earth's rotation in its orbit about the Sun, or even the Sun's rotation around the galaxy. The compound effect of all these rotations is that it is nearly impossible to have a practical observer who is experiencing truly inertial motion in space. Likewise, it is very difficult to have an observer who can always say that the speed of light is measured by him to be constant in all directions. Since as soon as his light path encloses an area, there will always be some small but non-zero speed of light difference around the circuit. The only perspective where the speed of light will be measured as c in all directions around an area circuit would then have to be an observer who is stationary in absolute space, or moving rectilinearly with respect to it. What is uncomfortable for some about this conclusion? is that implies that the theory of relativity may be wrong and there is in fact a preferred frame of reference for the speed of light to be found in some form of absolute space. To put it another way, the result implies that rotational motion is not relative at all and there is such a thing as absolute rest in the universe. All rotational motion is somehow referenced to this universal rest frame as the speed of light would also appear to be. We note that some relativists have come to recognize this, in particular the Australian relativist Jeffrey Bilger, who summed it up this way. The observable effects of absolute accelerations and of absolute velocities must be ascribed to interaction of bodies and physical systems with some absolute inertial system. We have no alternative but to identify this absolute system with the universe. Thus, in the context of physics, absolute motion must be understood to mean motion relative to the universe, and any wider or more abstract interpretation of the absolute must be denied. Interactions of bodies and physical systems with the universe cannot be described in terms of max hypothesis, since this is untenable. There is therefore no alternative to the ether hypothesis.